Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelists of the Roses. The yeah, last time we looked at the intro and the um, tutorial, and I'm just going through here just to see like what I can get with my other little screen name on the interwebs. I mean, Psycho. Because, yeah, you know, my little uh, draw with Capitalist, you know what, it wasn't really the best. Um, granted, I mean, you know, it's never the be-all, end-all with this game. You can make any deck work, really, if you have the right strategies. But, of course, some decks will give you a bit of an easier time than others. So I just want to see, like, what they'll um, allow me to choose with Psycho. And yeah, if it's not all that good, I'll just load up the Capitalist file and we'll go from there. Let's see, Serpentine Princess, Patrician of Darkness, hmm. I'm tempted, I'm tempted, and King Tiger Wanku. I like the Patrician of Darkness deck. I mean, it's not my absolute favorite. I would rather would have had the Pump King deck, but th this, this one isn't that awful. Huh. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of tempted, actually. Hmm. I'm seriously thinking about this. Um, you know what? Screw it. Let's give it a shot. Like, I won't save over the uh, previous file just in case. I mean, I really wish this game supported, like, multiple save files, but unfortunately, it doesn't. And, I mean, of course, this means I'd have to go through the intro again, you know. Should I say, like, well, yeah, this deck really can work for me, but, eh. But you know what? Fine. I think I will just go with this, and if it proves to be... Like, not working out, I might just go back to Capitalist, uh, you know, go through all this text again and try out Bird Face. Because, I mean, if anything, Bird Face will really help me against Weevil, but I don't know how that would uh, work out in the long run. Patrician of Darkness could really work out in the long run uh, for me. But, yeah, we'll, we'll just give it a shot, see how this goes, and, um, yeah, I'll just be cutting ahead. Oh, also one thing that I forgot to mention in the previous part, just for those of you that aren't familiar with this game or any other uh, Yu-Gi-Oh game from this era. Actually, I is that still a mechanic? I don't know, but I'm talking about the password mechanic where you can input passwords to unlock uh, new cards. Um, I used to think, like back in the day, I used to think that, um, you know, you would get the... Uh, passwords off of like the actual uh, physical Yu-Gi-Oh cards and like if you inputted those little codes at the bottom of those into a little password field you would get that card but that's not the case like these are like special passwords um for the sake of the game itself so yeah you can use like different passwords to unlock different cards to give you an easier time in the game Although that doesn't guarantee much because, um, you know, well, A, you know, you still have to take into account debt cost. So, yeah, you know, if you think, oh, yeah, I can just input a whole bunch of passwords for amazing cards and throw those into my deck. Okay, but that's going to make your debt cost ridiculous and you won't be able to beat the game. Um, also, you have to take into account, you know, actually drawing those cards <laughs> to help you out. So, yeah, you know, you might get like one or two like really good cards and add them to your deck and still make deck costs but you know you still have a deck of 40 cards so there's no guarantee you'll be able to draw that card so yeah inputting passwords it's not really like taking the easy way out because you like and i mean well bleh, stumbling over my words it's not really taking the easy way out because of so many other things you have to account for and i think the game you know they inputted the whole deck cost thing just to you know, avoid people like cheesing through the game with passwords like that. And, and that, that's actually really neat. And phone, really? Are you serious? But as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. The password thing, you know, the game 
took into consideration, you know, people trying to cheese it with amazing cards and yeah, it's a nice little balance, even though it always puts you at a disadvantage against the AI, but eh, it is what it is. Also, um, at least as far as the first two parts go, um, well, not, I mean, first two, first like three or so parts, like once I get past like what I feel is the biggest hurdle in the game, which is like essentially going to be the first three battles with Weevil, Rex, and then after them, I mean, after Weevil, he's going to show up, but I mean, obviously I want to fight Rex first to maybe get like a few more cards to help me out, but yeah, um, after Weevil, there's technically going to be Pegasus, and my god, his deck can be just ridiculous to go up against. So, yeah, uh, for the sake of, you know, having an easier time editing and just, you know, keep things moving along, the first three or so parts will be entirely post-commentary. So, you know, essentially I'm just going to play them on my own, um, not live, of course, and then just... And then some post commentary, talk about my strategies, and uh, yeah, upload them like that. Because I can almost guarantee I will get a game over against Weevil. He is just so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Also, I should probably just check out my deck and see what I'm working with. Work on a little preemptive strategy here. But yeah, um, you know, post commentary for the first few parts. It'll be fine, though. But all right, see you in the fight against Weevil. There's some really good things in the chest, huh? Huh. I could really fight his bugs with my bugs. That could work out. Oh, Cyberstein! Oh, duh, I'm an idiot. N none of these are actually in my chest. That actually is just my whole deck right now because, yeah, like nothing's lit up on the chest side. Oh, <laughs> boy, I'm smart. But all right, it's time to go ahead and fight Weevil as the first battle of the game. So yeah, Weevil Underwood right there in Chester. Yeah, <laughs> so you're the legendary Rose Duelist. Prepare to face the sting of my insect deck. Yeah. Um, so as you can plainly see, this is still, well, I mean, this is still, this is my first attempt at him. And the fact that I'm commentating over this should tell you I was successful. But, yeah, like, you will see in this battle that I was sort of, like, treating it as, like, you know, nothing major. Because, for starters, like, I was just sort of, like, you know, in the opening turns of this, I was really just, like, trying to get a feel for the controls again. Like, really, you know, try everything out. Because, yeah, even though the tutorial was telling you everything and you saw everything in action... You weren't actually controlling anything so it'd be like let's see if we turn something in defense mode you press this button to do that and the game would automatically do it you wouldn't actually press anything so yeah i was just looking through not really the best hand but at least i had that little wasteland right there and yeah these few wasteland spots really really helped me out yeah, I pressed the graveyard button. Yeah, right now I'm just pressing all the different buttons, seeing what can happen, and yeah, zooming in and out. But yeah, essentially, I was just thinking like, yeah, this is gonna be my practice attempt. I don't think I'm going to win. You will see me make some really stupid decisions. But at a certain point, something happened, and I was like, oh my god. I actually have a real chance at this. And then I was just playing for my life at that point. But yeah, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. Also, if it sounds like I'm not going, well, I'm not paying uh, much attention to what's going on on screen, that's because I'm also playing something else while I'm recording this post commentary. Multitasking, <laughs> multitasking. It's Binding of Isaac. I'm just trying to get Mega Blast. That's all I need for 1001%. But, yeah, I'm just, you know, doing some basic things at the start, summoning whatever in my hand, send them in defense mode, because, hey, why not? But, yeah, the reason why I was so scared of Weevil, and you will see it uh, in this video, because he actually was able to summon it, but, yeah, like, you really want to be careful of Weevil, because 
just like in the anime, his best card is the Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth. The Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth is something you do not want to mess with. Like, no. Um, because, quite frankly, he was able to summon that one time when I was playing him, like, way back when, and he, he was able to summon it really early. Uh, granted, it takes a few turns for the Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth to be summoned. Uh, it takes, I believe, six turns total. Um, five turns for the little cocoon to fully, uh, develop, and then one more turn for the larva to... You know, just finish its development, and then you're dealing with an insane monster. Luckily, um, in this game, the moth actually has a passive ability that, like, benefits Weevil for not moving it. Unfortunately, in that um, time I mentioned where he was able to, like, summon that thing on the first... Well, summon the cocoon on the first turn, um, like, I made the mistake of just cornering him in, like, trying to get real close to him so that I can get a summon victory. Oh, and here's what happens, you know, if you choose to attack and, um, you know, the animations are on. Yeah, this takes forever. <laughs> I mean, the cool animations, I will give him that, but the loading involved is just ridiculous. Oh, my God. Some hairy stuff is happening right now on Isaac. Oh, crap. Uh, but yeah, it, I mean, the, the battles are really cool and fun to see, but they just take too long. So I end up turning the animations off after, you know, we get to see a few of them. I mean, they are neat, and I guess I might turn them on occasionally just to see, like, different monsters getting their attacks in, but they really, really increase the uh, length of the matchup like longer than need be i mean granted so do the battle animations in fire emblem but i like keeping those on because they're, they're really cool and they don't take this long the game doesn't have to load up for each individual one but that aside like going back to what i was saying like i'm you know my one of my first times playing this i made the mistake of trying to box him in to get that kind of victory you know where uh he can't summon anything and then he summoned that great moth on me and uh, was essentially able to just attack my life points instantly with that. And then, yeah, it was just bad. Real bad. But thankfully, I was more lucky this time around. Because if he summons the perfectly ultimate great moth early, you're screwed. Plus, I had the perfect way to counteract that uh, in, in this matchup, as we will see later on. And yeah, just waiting for these animations to end. As I frantically try to kill enemies in Isaac. I am so professional. It's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, I think at this point, I just kept forgetting to turn off the animations. Like, okay, yeah, two should be enough. And, oh, great, I'm going into another fight with them active. But, hey, it is what it is. I do like how accurate the death animations are for the insects, though. Like, the spider just, go, like, falling over onto its back and its legs just curling in. Disgusting in real life, but actually pretty cool in a video game. I mean, it could be worse. It could be the Forbidden Memories uh, animations. Like, if you think the, like, just waiting for these battle animations to load up is long, oh god, you should have seen the loading times for the battle animations and Forbidden Memories. Granted, that was a PS1 game, but it was still utterly ridiculous. <laughs> like, to the point that I never never activated them. Oh, and also, uh, let me pause Isaac here. Because, yeah, like, what you're seeing right now, I can't remember if I already showed it off. Like I said, I'm just half paying attention to this. But, yeah, what I'm doing right now is, um, 
well as you saw i was like doing cards up and like what that does is you know it allows you to fuse cards of course those weren't valid combinations i was doing right there i was just doing that to burn through the cards in my hand because yeah you can use like failed fusions to your advantage because you know the cards that fail in the fusion go to your graveyard and it always follows like the order that you do the cards up too so like the last standing card is going to be like the last wait what's where i'm looking for here Okay, well, the last card that you did up is going to be, like, the last card standing. So, essentially, if you have a Surefire Fusion, and, like, those are the first two cards you have, but then you have, like, that third card, and you're thinking, like, oh, okay, if I fuse that with the other two, like, it'll make a even more powerful monster. But, no, if it fails, it will destroy that powerful monster you made, and then you're just... You know, sitting there with that subpar monster. So yeah, you really want to be careful about your fusions. But yeah, in in my case, what I was doing, I was just burning through them to try and just free up some extra space in my hand so I could hopefully get some better cards. And to be fair, it didn't really work out all that amazing for me, but eh, could have been worse. Could have been worse. And that, that was another reason why I was treating this like a practice thing too, because I forgot to have my fusion reference at hand. Um, I, I used to have a list of fusions that I wrote down and they were compatible with both like this game and Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Well, not every single one. Forbidden Memories, if I recall, was a little more lenient than this game in regards of fusions. But, yeah. Um, like, I lost that list ages ago. And I was thinking, okay, I'll just go to Game Facts and use one of the fusion lists on there. And, you know, that'll help me out tremendously during this LP. And... Yeah, like, I started recording this, and I was like, oh, wait, I forgot to get the list off Game Facts. Eh, whatever, it is what it is, I'll live. And yeah, apparently you can't just press circle once you, like, set the battle animation to abbreviate. You have to, like, confirm by pressing X. Yeah, the more you know. So, yeah, like, just not having my fusion list at hand. That was another reason why I figured, like, yeah, this is just gonna be a throwaway match. Like, I'm just gonna have to scrap this attempt, and, uh, hey, maybe on my second attempt, I'll be able to succeed. But how I su was able to succeed in this, it was just pure, pure luck. I, I can't even say it was skill. I, I really can't. It, it was pure luck. I'm trying to pay attention, too, so I don't forget what I did. <laughs> Though I don't think it happened this early. Yeah, just looking through my hand here, wasn't really too thrilled with what I have because I don't really have much that could benefit from the forest spaces. I mean, well, well, technically I did. I mean, you know, that basic insect right there. So basic, so basic. But, I don't know, I mean, Weevil, he had that Quaker Hercules out and I mean, when, when he flipped that, like you should have heard my reaction. I was just like incredulous. Like, how was he able to summon that? Really, you know, like, how was he? Because he was throwing stuff out, like, every single turn. Though, he was probably throwing out, like, some magic cards, like, magic and trap cards at first. And, of course, those don't have, um, like, those don't take your summon points. So he was probably able to accumulate some summon points off of just laying the magic cards, and that's how he was able to get that Quaker Hercules out. Because... Yeah, like, you have to have your bluff game strong for this game. Yeah, that Hercules beetle. He was... Like, he had me on the ropes. I was just so scared. And even then, I had my uh, Patrician of Darkness right there in the corner. And I knew that was, like, a bad strategy, especially since I could get, like, you know, that summon... Or, like, all occupied summon spaces. Wait, no, all summon spaces occupied... A uh, loss thing, but eh, I was taking my chances. 
also I think this is where I made the stupid mistake of like, I'm, I'm trying to remember because I did waste that curse yep yep I wasted that curse breaker right here because I forgot that in this game you can fuse uh, monsters with certain magic cards magic or trap cards to make them more powerful and of course like you have to go into their menu to actually like look and see which cards make which one stronger and it just so happened curse breaker made whatever the heck that thing was stronger but in the end it didn't really matter because i was fighting weevil on his terrain essentially but like i said everything was able to work out in the long run so all right time to focus more on isaac now oh my god the frail come on frail hurry up and pop out again Ah, crap. I am paying so much attention to what is going on on the screen. Okay, that battle worked out fine for me. And there's Cyberstein. I, I like Cyberstein. I actually have a physical Cyberstein. It's just, I don't know, Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters in general are like really creative and cool. And some of the pun... Uh, monsters because there are quite a few punny monsters but yeah, some of them are just flat out amazing yeah Yu-Gi-Oh itself is a pretty fun card game and I don't know, I'm kind of disappointed in myself for waiting so long for finally doing a Yu-Gi-Oh part because oh my god epic hack okay um yeah 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 I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm just trying to focus on Isaac and this at the same time oh my god I will come back for you epic hack I will come back for you okay but um yeah, like, I am recording this after the first part is going up, and I'm actually kind of surprised at the reception it got. I mean, it got some really nice views, I mean, for a very uber-long um, tutorial video. I'm actually shocked it did that well. And then, like, people were leaving comments like, oh, man, this is going to be really good. Like, I, I love this game as a kid. And, you know, even people trying to give me tips, I was like... I actually was not expecting that. Like, really? Um, though I guess, hey, you never really know how something's gonna do until you try. But yeah, I really do like Yu-Gi-Oh! It was a part, like, just a huge part of my childhood growing up. I loved the anime. I played the card game. Um, though, I mean, you know, well, I loved the anime up until... Okay, the original series was good. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX was mediocre like very mediocre um and then i didn't even bother to watch the other ones like zexel and 5ds although i heard 5ds was actually all right i don't know but it's like yeah they they're they're kind of like beating a dead horse at this point sort of like the same thing with dragon ball you know dragon ball was great dragon ball z was great and then Akira Toriyama, you know, he was done, but then, hey, uh, the studio, they want to, they, you know, they want more Dragon Ball, so they make Dragon Ball GT without him, and it was horrendous. So now Toriyama is like, you know, after he saw how bad GT was, and then Dragon Ball Evolution kind of, yeah, that live-action Dragon Ball movie kind of, you know, sullied the name of the series forever. And, um, you know, Dragon Ball Kai, which is like, taking out all the best parts of Dragon Ball Z just to make it move faster. He was like, okay, yeah, you're you're done destroying, you know, what I helped build. I'm just going to, uh, you know, make my own series and, um, you know, movies and just restore Dragon Ball Z to its former glory. And that's why we have the movies now, I guess. I don't know. I'm just talking out my ass. Yeah, I was so mad at some of the mistakes I was making in this game. Oh my god, trying to focus on this hard room. I'm in, in Isaac right now. Oh god, I almost died. I should pay attention to one thing and not both at the same time. But who am I to learn my lesson? Okay, we're good in this room. All right, so what was I doing here? I mean, I had my little defense wall right there. Oh, yeah, I remember because I was trying my hardest, my hardest to get him to attack that Cyberstein. 
I was just bluffing my butt off like you will attack this Cyberstein. You will activate his ability. Spoiler alert, it didn't really happen immediately, but eh, whatever. Yeah, used Ukazi. I think that was Ukazi to deal direct damage to him. You know, every little bit helps. It really does, actually. And you will see that that's kind of how I was able to sort of take him out. Just, you know, chipping away, chipping away at him. Never underestimate the power of chip damage. Now I want some chips. Really want some chips now. Preferably Fritos. They are delicious. That man eater bug. I was so salty over that. Like, granted, I should have seen it coming, but still, you, you never really expect something like that. Especially since I thought I was doing so well with my little strategy there. But yeah, at this point. <laughs> You could just tell I was like on the verge of just giving up. I was just weighing all my options and I knew he was sort of like trying to close in on me to get that like every um, summon space occupied victory win condition, lose condition thing. And I think this is where my luck turned around. Oh wait, no, 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 because yeah, MVP of the game number one, Dragon Zombie. Yeah, and he gets powered up being on that wasteland space. You know, and I was using that like, okay, if he comes at me, it's gonna have a, you know, a bad time. Because yeah, his Quaker Hercules, you know, he, he's powerful in the forest, but by attacking me, he loses that little 500 bonus he had, you know, because he's on a wasteland, my territory. And I was able to take him out. I was so happy. Unfortunately, that was not his only uh, Quaker Hercules. I mean, it makes sense that the Bug Master would have more than, you know, one powerful bug monster. But still, I was so proud of myself until I saw the next one come out. And I was just like, are you serious, bro? Like, is this really happening? So is this where I got super lucky? I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to think. No. But I wasn't moving that dragon zombie. That, that was my star player right there. But yeah, like, it was almost like once that dragon zombie came out, Weevil, his AI sort of changed to be like really defensive. Offensive. Like, he wasn't advancing to save his life, really, because I guess I had him scared. Not that I'm complaining, that worked out better for me. Uh, just trying to take care of a boss real quick in Isaac. Before I... Okay. I don't even know why I was looking at Zanky like that. I mean, you know, he's just... A warrior, a simple warrior, you know, just... He, would, he, he was there for backup. He was there for emotional support, you know. Sometimes that's important, and yeah, max monsters on the field. That's another way to burn through cards, too, you know, like if your hand's full and you want to get to, like, a magic card or something. But, yeah, like, if you... Like, if you have the max number of monsters on your side of the field, you know, just... Lay down a monster and it'll immediately disintegrate. I don't really recommend, like, I mean, burning through your cards can be, you know, an acceptable strategy, but I wouldn't recommend relying on it as heavily as I was. Because that can lead to some bad times. Wait, what was Cyberstein's ability? I can't remember. Huh. Like, seriously, I cannot remember what his ability was. <laughs> oh well, must not have been all that important or amazing. Uh, well, I'll, I'll probably figure out what it was. Ah, oh, crap, I'm dead. 
in Isaac, that is. And, yep, okay. That run sucked anyway. I'm just trying to get Mega Blast. That's all I need. That's all I need. And yeah, I, this was the point where I was just using Dragon Zombie to take out as many of his things as possible. Hmm. Okay, I think I'll just try a standard Isaac run then. And hopefully have enough battery charges to keep rerolling every deal with the devil. If you do not play Isaac, you have no clue what I'm talking about. And yeah, there's Shadow Ghoul. I was so stoked to see him uh, when I was going through my deck on the little, like, world map. Granted, I can't really use him to the best of his abilities because I don't really have a means to uh, do anything with labyrinths yet. But he really will come in handy later on. And especially if I can sort of get like a little, uh, like, labyrinth theme going on, he will definitely come in handy. And will probably be my star player, like, just unstoppable. Especially with the strategy that I started implementing here. Well, I say started implementing, but whatever. Then, yeah, there's Lizark. He's a beast. Wait, is he a beast? I think he benefited from being on Forest. Like I said, I'm not paying attention at all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is why I will never be a full-time YouTuber. I'm just so... Like, unprofessional. Eh. That's the fun of it, I guess. If you're not having fun, then, like, what, what, what's, what's really the point? Okay, this hand looks familiar. I, I believe this is where I got really lucky. And yeah, reduces the opposing monster by 300 points when attacked. I was gonna try and use Shadow Stalker to my advantage. Oh, but wait, no, I think, yeah, yeah, I couldn't use him immediately, but that was my goal. I was like, okay, I can use Shadow Stalker to you know, like, if he tries to come at me with a super powerful monster, I have Shadow Stalker right there to sort of, like, uh, make my life a little bit easier. Just a tad bit, just a tad, but oh no. Infinite Dismissal. Which all it does was just spell my basic insect. It was nothing really to be worried about at all. And what was I trying to do with basic insect? Was I just trying to go straight for his life points with him? Which was not really the best strategy. I don't know. I probably should have like kept talking to myself during this. Just so I could remember like what some of my strategies were. But yeah, Weevil. like He was preparing for war on his side of the field. And yep. The second Quaker Hercules. When I saw that, I was just like, okay, yep, I'm done. I'm done. So that 14 like 100 damage just really really disillusioned me and I was just I, I was ready to accept my fate I was ready to accept my fate at this point I just gave up all hope and just started doing random stuff and I was like well maybe Shadow Stalker can help me out here so I'll just waste Skull Guardian oh wait what's going on oh zombie warrior because, you know, when that happened, I was like, yay! Wait, maybe this will give me something good? Oh no, it gives me a monster with no special ability whatsoever, and he's actually kind of weak. So I lost uh, Shadow Stalker's little special ability, and I had a monster that wasn't anything to write home about. And even when you saw me just, like, standing right there, just doing nothing for a few seconds, like, that was just me just face palming. So yeah, this was the point I gave up all hope. I, I just didn't think it was gonna work out in my favor. And granted, you shouldn't be like that. I mean, cause even the game says like, even if it looks like, uh, you know, you're going to lose, things aren't going your way, just believe in the heart of the cards and uh, something good might happen. But I wasn't having any of that. 
So at this point, I was just burning through my cars, just trying to hurry up and end this as quickly as possible. But I think I was trying to have it so that, like... Wait, what was I trying to do here? I'm, I'm really curious. So they have Witty Phantom and whatever that thing is. But then Phantom Ghost and whatever that thing was made Pum King. And me just standing still there for a second was, you know, me just being in utter shock. Because Pum King is amazing. Uh, there was a reason, you know, if you were paying attention earlier, why I said, like, I would rather have the Pum King deck. Well, yeah, Pum King is awesome. Pum King is life. Because his ability is that whenever he's face up in defense mode, all your zombies gain 100 attack and defense every turn. Or is it just attack? No, I think it's both. At yeah, it is both attack and defense. And considering I had quite a few zombies at my disposal. Yeah, that was a very good thing. A very good thing indeed. So my goal at that point was to hurry up and get them onto the wasteland and just let nature take its course. So we're going to get to that soon enough, but yeah, right there, the cocoon. And I'm about to go over there and like check it out. The larva. Oh, oh, larva is first. Okay, well, whatever. But yeah, essentially with the larva, it transforms into pupa of moth after it's been face up in defense mode for five turns. So yeah, whenever you see larva of moth on the field, you want to hurry up and get over there and destroy it. But I mean, good luck with that, you know, cause you're fighting Weevil on his land, the forest. I mean, the larva already gets that 500 increase to its defense, but you know, like I, I was just going on borrowed time at this point. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead, hurry up, bring Pumpkin forward and just, you know, start getting like as much from him as I can. You know, like 100 attack and defense per turn. I had to. I think I wasted a few more cards here just because. Oh, well, just one, just one. I mean, he, he wasn't gonna come in handy. Of course, I had to wait a turn to like flip him up and then turn him into defense. Oh, wow, I forgot that happened. He actually attacked? That was stupid. Yeah, like, why would you attack a face down thing that's staying on the wasteland, unmoving, when you know good and well you're about to lose your 500 bonus? whatever put him in defense and pumpkin was going to stay like that for the rest of the game <laughs> and yeah i still had the max number of monsters on the field so i couldn't summon anything but eh, at this point it didn't really matter because my goal was to strengthen um my boy uh, dragon zombie as much as possible and then move him forward to just destroy all of Weevil's monsters and maybe get a direct attack on the life points before perfectly ultimate great moth could be formed. Because at this point I knew there was no hope for me to get there in time to destroy it. Especially since I didn't know like what he had in defense mode down there. Yeah, I was weighing the pros and cons of like leaving the wasteland to attack that uh, bug, but eh, I'm kind of glad I didn't. And I'm kind of shocked Mammoth Graveyard isn't considered a zombie, considering it's a walking skeleton. Like that annoyed me. I, it's considered a dinosaur, I believe. Mammoths aren't dinosaurs, I'm just saying. There was Fiend's Hand right there. That was a... Yeah, yeah, Fiend's Hand. That's that's just like Man-Eater Bug when it, if it gets attacked, destroys your, the attacking monster. I was trying to bait him so hard with that thing, too. 
I really was, but I was also trying to be careful too, because if I moved him forward in attack mode, you know, there's no telling how much damage I could have taken. I mean, I would have taken a lot, but you know, I didn't feel like doing the math to figure out like would that have killed me or not. Then great mammoth of gold fine. At that point, I was mad at myself for having uh, Fiend's Hand out there, but I mean, to be fair, if I didn't throw out Fiend's Hand, I wouldn't have got Great Mammoth of Gold Mine. But yeah, Great Mammoth of Gold Mine is considered a zombie, but not Mammoth Graveyard. That that is so weird. That is so. That that makes no sense to me, man. I'm just still mulling that over, like, why both are mammoths? Or like, skeletons of mammoths, it made no sense, but yeah, he's a dinosaur! But yeah, I was just moving him over to that wasteland over there, so Zombie Warrior could get, you know, boost from that wasteland, and yeah, just moving Patrician of Darkness away from all that action, so that he'll be safe from all harm. Also, the phone is ringing, oh god, no. But yeah, right there, uh, his larva of moth was able to evolve, with lack of a better term, into pupa of moth, I believe? Yeah, pupa of moth. And in pupa form, it only has to survive like that for one turn. So when you see pupa, you definitely wanna hurry up and get over there and destroy it. Uh, granted, you know, if you destroy Larva of Moth, that flat out just eliminates the threat. If you destroy Pupa of Moth, you just deal with the Great Moth. It's perfectly ultimate Great Moth you don't want to see. And unfortunately, I did end up seeing him. But you will get to see like one of the most hilarious things ever. Like, if you're familiar with the game, you probably already know what was happening and just how ridiculous the rest of this battle is going to be. But if you're not familiar, oh boy, you're in for a treat. Also, I should probably mute this laptop that I'm playing Isaac on. Okay. But, like, just a mild spoiler, my turns of, you know, increasing my zombies by 100, Wait, no, my time of increasing my, uh, my my zombies powers by 100 every turn was about to come to an end, but it didn't matter. But yep, there's perfectly ultimate Great Maw. And after this turn, you're about to see its ability in effect. Well, I'm about to reveal it too. But yeah, while this card is face up, all enemy monsters are reduced by 100 points each turn. That is why Weevil is a really, really hard first fight. And he has a lower debt cost than Rex. That makes no sense. But yeah, I mean, this is a pretty daunting first match for somebody that's new to the game. Because, you know, Weevil, literally everything in his deck is going to be strengthened by the forest. At this point, you don't know enough about the game, probably, to really, you know, fuse to make a great monster. Not only that, but like, your deck flat out doesn't have anything that can destroy the larva or pupa of moth before it fully matures. So the moment you see perfectly ultimate great moth and then you see that it's like slowly reducing your monsters to nothing, you're, you know, like, you're, you're, you're kind of screwed. But as you can see, because of my pumpkin, it canceled out that effect on everything except Mammoth Graveyard. Yeah. So yeah, that's why this was hilarious. The yeah, Dimension Hole teleports your leader to where the, you know, that magic card is, where it's activated. Essentially, that's always going to be, you know, like, your get out of jail free card. You know, like, if... You know, if it looks like things are about to near the end for you, uh, they're closing in on getting that uh, 
you know, like all summon spaces occupied, victory, or, you know, just getting ready to attack your life points directly. You got Dimension Hole all the way on the other side of the field. Hey, you're good to go. So yeah, Yami was another little ace in my hole. I was trying to get it to a really, really good spot so that literally everything that I had would be uh, just improved by it. Except Mammoth Graveyard, I believe. I don't think that would that was helped by Yami. Yeah, essentially I was just trying to get Yami into a central position to turn as much of the forest into dark, darkness as possible. But at the same time, I was trying to be, you know, really careful too, because I did not want him to attack it. But yeah, uh, you're going to see nothing really major happen for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to go ahead and start speeding this up and I'll get back to you when more major stuff happens. All right, so as you can see, a whole lot of nothing was going on there because I was not taking any chances. Because at that point, I was like, you know what? If it gets to turn zero, it gets to turn zero. Because, hey, I, I would rather just let that happen than, you know, like take my chances and, you know, lose trying to take them on head on. Although, um... Like I saw that he began to sort of start mobilizing his units. And it was like the moment he entered Yami, I was like, hey, you know what? I mean, I got a super powerful dragon zombie right here. I can go ahead and just attack whatever he's trying to uh, invade with. And that's how I was sort of able to just, you know, chip away at him, get him down to 750. 
And yeah, you know, that bear trap did take out my zombie warrior, but that was kind of a blessing in disguise because that meant I could pull out the great mammoth of gold fine. And yeah, it was just, I was excited when I was able to do that. I was like, cool, let him try to attack me. Let him. But yeah, like I really didn't mind if this would have gone to turn 100. Because I was like, hey, I mean, we have an infinite stasis thing going on. It, it doesn't matter if I lose. I think at this point, um, what is it? Uh, the Wasteland was the only thing keeping Mammoth Graveyard, <laughs> like, not at zero and zero. Yeah, it was at this point, I was like, you know what? I think I can actually win this. I mean, um... The moment I summoned Pum King, that sort of like improved my mood a little, but then having, you know, all these Yami spaces and then getting the Great Mammoth of Gold find out, I was like, yeah, I might actually be able to do this. I might actually be able to turn this around. I mean, well, I already sort of turned it around, but I mean, at this point, I stopped being on the defensive and started getting on the offensive. Like taking my chances and actually venturing out into the forest to take out some of his monsters in attack mode. So that was a really big risk on my part because I didn't know what he was working with face down, but hey, I mean, it worked out in my favor in the long run. Oh, and also that uh, sort of dark destruction that was just there as like collateral, you know, like should uh, Dragon Zombie and uh, well, now Great Man from Goldfine. Um, like, should they have fallen? You know, I had that warrior, Zanki, I believe. But yeah, I still had him in my hand, and I figured, like, if push comes to shove, I can summon him, activate the Sword of Dark Destruction, and then just pray. But, I mean, as you saw, like, I was running out of cards in my hand. I only had four cards left. That's why you want to be really careful when you burn your cards to, like, try and get to a particular card. That's not a strategy you really want to use 24-7. Yeah, it worked out in my favor, but that won't always be the case. So yeah, I have my Great Mammoth out, like, you know, way out of its, well, my comfort zone. But, I mean, I had him down to 150. And with that, I had him down to 50. I was just so mad. I was like, you couldn't have had a monster that was slightly weaker? You really couldn't have? And even still, I was a bit on edge because, you know, I had my two zombies out of their comfort zone. I mean, anything could have happened, really. And then he left that one thing in attack mode right there. And I was just so afraid to attack it, but I called his bluff. And it worked out in my favor. I was really expecting that to be like a like a screwed up trap card or like a monster with a messed up ability, but nah, he just you know, he tried to bluff me, I called him, and I won. So yeah, I'm still in shock that I was able to turn that around and win, considering I gave up like part way through. But yeah, uh, every time you win a match, you get to go to the graveyard slot machine where, you know, you can win cards from their graveyard. So yeah, I got a giant scorpion of the tundra and a block attack. Like, whatever the roulette, or roulette, whatever the slots land on, like, that's what you get. But what you really want to do is match up three of the same, because that allows you to get a really rare card. So we won, we have Weevil in tears. And we get the Rose card, the first white Rose card. And upon beating him, we have unlocked two more battles we can go to. Uh, one being Pegasus and the other being Keith. Or, you know, I mean, from the anime, he's Bandit Keith. In America! But, no, like, you know, he, he's, he's plain old Keith here. Pegasus is another one that's, like, really difficult, to me at least. Um, cause like his deck is exactly like how it was from, uh, the anime, like Toon World is just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I do, I do not like Toon World. 
Toon World is not your friend unless, unless, you know, it's Toon Link. I like Toon Link, but he doesn't reside in Toon World. He resides in Hyrule. Cell shaded Hyrule. But yeah, uh, we won't be going to Keith or Pegasus next time. We'll be going to Rex. Rex Raptor, to be exact. Because, yeah, he has the lowest deck cost of all of them. And in some ways, he's easier than Weevil. I mean, he's definitely going to be easier thanks to my deck. Holy crap. But yeah, um, he is a bit of an easier fight than Weevil, all things considered. With block attack on my side, you know, I might be able to... Uh, like raise some carnage with that although I still wish I would have gotten like some better cards from his graveyard but hey it is what it is but yep next time we fight Rex so thank you for watching have a great day and see you next time for some more let's play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelists of the Roses goodbye